I'm tired of these old heads claiming hip hop dead. Knowing damn well she in my bed, sick with cold sores on her lips. And the more y'all spit, the more she gets eager to treat her. I please her when I receive her. Some sweat reduces the fever, though. Neither of us can trust her. Put level bucks. So, who are you? My name is Ace Hunt. I'm from Spanish Harlem. I make beats. Rap. Alright, and where are we right now? Right now, we're in New York, in the middle of New York City, Central Park. One of my favorite places in the whole city. So, so special about Central Park? People get robbed here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's special to me because I got sent to VA when I was like around, like in 10th grade. So, like people down there, they appreciate the city way more than people that's in, actually in the city. So it's like, when I was down there, they uh, talk about it more often than none, and you start to realize that you got taken away from something you didn't really appreciate. So when I came back to the city, it was like, why not explore my city a little bit more? And I finally realized that this is a place that I actually love. I feel like I'm home. And I'm you born and raised in New York? Born and raised. Well, what's that you said VA? Um, nonsense. Bad people. Uh, Bad crowd. So you say you rap and you do beats. How long have you been doing years old for? I've been rapping forever. Like the first time I ever recall myself even rapping or being introduced to hip hop itself was when I was on my aunt's tomorrow stoop with my father. He was sitting right next to me. And, you know, he kicked the beat and he was just telling me to freestyle. I, at the time I was nervous to do it, but right now I'd probably kick anything. How old were you? Um, I say about three or four. Oh wow. Yeah. Right. Making beats though, um, since my exactly on my thirteenth birthday is when my mother purchased the uh, beat machine for me. Oh yeah? Yeah. So you asked for it? Yeah. When did you ask for a beat machine? Huh? At, at your thirteenth birthday. Who asked for a beat a machine on your thirteenth birthday? Um fifth I remember being a fifth grader, it was on a Saturday. I remember eating pancakes that morning. But uh my mother what got kind of pancakes. Huh? What kind of pancakes. On Jemima, regular original. Maybe right. buttermilk, I'm not sure. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but um my mother got this magazine randomly of like airsoft guns and all these other things and at the funny shit. Is I could have looked at been looking at guns, but at the back of the magazine it was a whole bunch of speakers and NPCs and things like that, and that was interesting. Which is ironic twist. So that's when I think that was the same week that Kanye West's first album dropped, and like that was the first album I ever even listened to, like really like listened to. It was like I was interested in it. Every song, like, all the words he was saying, I actually knew what was going on. This is fifth grade I'm talking about, you know. So I didn't even know he made beats in general. I didn't even know what beat making was, but uh, son told me, like, this is what I was meant for. And I just randomly asked my mother, you know, can you give me one for my birthday? My birthday's coming up. Either this or Xbox 360. The Xbox 360 is too expensive. So she bought me an uh, NPC. Alright. Yeah, alright, cool. Uh, so Kanye West, the first album you ever fully grasped, fully listened to, fully grasped. Yeah. It was the first hip hop song you heard, you can recall. Ever in my life? Yeah, ever in your life. First hip hop song. First hip hop song I can remember is Ready or Not by the Fugees. I was, it was early morning, I was going to kindergarten. You know, um, I remember eating the cereal and everything. It was the the blue box of uh, uh, Cheerios. I don't know, the first Cheerios, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I remember when they had those. Yeah. You don't think so, make those? I don't think so. I think it comes like a big jumble. But anyway. I know what you're talking about. I remember, I remember those. Yeah. It was, uh, that's, uh, it was, only my kitchen light was on. It was like a whole little vibe, and that's really like the the only. That's the first hip hop song I ever recorded. Him. It's crazy guy. Yeah. Am I just crazy? Mine was hypnotized by Biggie. So yeah. it, funny. I, I'm from Brooklyn, and I, just, I remember I was sleeping, and so I'm the only person in my family who listens to hip hop. So the radio used to come on every morning like, as the alarm, and the same song used to come on all the time, all the time. And I just naturally assumed it was a reggae song because every my family listens to reggae music. So I naturally assumed it was a reggae song. And I remember one day I heard it at school, and I was like, "Why are y'all playing this reggae song?" And they're like, "Nah, it's a rap song." And that, that was the first hip hop song I ever listened to. And then like right after that, with "More Money, More Problems," this might have been like right around the time he died, but I didn't know like who he was, yeah, was going no type of significance of him or what the song was, but. It had to have been right around the same time, because I know he's not in either one of those videos for those songs, but, ah. Anyways, so where do you live currently? Right now I live in Spanish Harlem. In Spanish Harlem? It's a beautiful place if, if everything, the bullshit stops. Well, yeah. I think everything's beautiful if the bullshit stops, but yeah, it's a very beautiful place. A lot of great rappers from Harlem. Yeah. You know? Great, no, nah, I wouldn't say great, great, but 
very in interesting rappers. People that I'm not, I have to admit, very um, influenced me a lot. Yeah. So what are, what are you listening to? Currently? Yeah. I'm into Kendrick. Kendrick is dope. Kendrick is very hip hop. He 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 makes it seem like the game is coming back. He makes he gives me that feeling. Like coming back to what? Coming back to what it used to be. What it used to be. I mean, you're you're you're. All right. First of all, I gotta ask. So your first album, your first album that you fully grasped was was um, Kanye West. What's the oldest album you have in your catalog? Whether it be on your iPod, whether it just be on your iTunes at the crib, what's the oldest album? How far back do you go? And fully albums? Yeah, full albums. I don't want like one Sugar Hill Gang song. Like I want <laughs> the album. Oldest album if I want to have is probably Illmatic. Nice. Illmatic was that ninety four. Alright. It's between that and Infamous. I'm all people. I'm 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 willing to bet Illmatic was before that, but it, it could be close. I'm willing to bet Illmatic was before. Alright, so you you got some type of hip hop knowledge. So when you say it's going back, is that it's going back to that? Going back to Illmatic? To that feel? Because people people uh people tend to think that it's all about the uh, the lyrics, it what brings it back, or the flow of the. It's not really just that. It's just everything in total. It's the videos that you bring into the table. It's the the visual, the, the clothes that you wear, and the image that you're trying to bring, the movement, the things that you're trying to influence. Um, it's all. I, I'm, as a producer, I think it's all about the beats. I think being a producer is like, like you're like the playmaker on the floor. You're the point guard on the floor. You control the whole mood, the whole vibe, or where the direction the song is gonna go. All right. Two things off that. One. So when you first hear a song, that's what you, that's what you first gravitate to is the beats. Yeah. And you can tolerate subpar rapping if the beat is bananas. Yeah. What's your favorite beat? My favorite beat of all time. I wonder by Kanye West. I wonder. It's on a graduation album. Song number four. I know about her. <laughs> I I looked that up. Doesn't say that to me. I don't, right off the bat. Why? I wonder. Okay, I do know what you're talking about. No. I do know exactly. Samples ill, synthesizes ill, drums ill, just from beginning to end, then stop. He and you know it's crazy. It was sub lyrics and that. He wasn't really like thoroughly rapping that. He was just stating shit, you know. But it was like just dope. Like the feeling of it was just it was the feel grand, you know. Sort of like flashing lights. But I think I wonder was blue flashing lights out the window. Period. The beat or the song? Both. Both. In general. That was a great album. That was a great Kanye album. Yeah, graduation was crazy. It took me out of space for that. That was, that was a great Kanye album. So how do you feel about his newer stuff? Newer stuff. I've, I've heard a lot of mixed reviews. <laughs> um, Kanye was very interesting. He's, he's, he's different, you know. He says he's a genius. I, don't, I think there's... I don't think you, you can, people can consider you a genius until you actually die to see, like, all the things that you See your, your full body of work? You know what I'm saying? Like, to see but you don't, you don't think up to date from, from when he started... The rapper started in what, 02? Mm -hmm. But the producer goes back. Very, at, like 1999. Yeah, the producer goes back a couple of years prior to that. So, so, so we'll say from 99 to 2013, that body of work doesn't classify him as a musical genius? Shit, if you want to put it that way, yes. Well, could you say before he dies, as though later work, so say. say Start, you, you start from here, and everything he does now is trash. Does that doesn't necessarily just continue what he originally had, would it? Not really, no, because it's there already. Yeah. So, I mean, if you feel, if you don't if you don't feel he's a genius, that's another argument. But like, the body of work he has currently, how do you feel about him? I feel his first three albums are classic albums. I still makes banana beats like. I don't even know all the beats that he does for like other people. He's, he's highly creative. Um, he's on a whole different level of creativity. But you know, I guess it's just my ears and my opinion of like hip hop and what we're expecting from him. Is one thing is having expectations. You should never have expectations in anything you do because anything and everything can let you down. You from know? having expectations, nothing can ever go your way. But so you have high expectations of Kanye. I what have certain expectations of Kanye, certain. not high. I expect him to come out and go a certain direction. Shit that I heard before, that I'm thinking, oh, if he make this something like this again, it's gonna be dope. But you know, he's 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 moving, and I can't really blame him for that. All right, All right let's get back to you for a little bit. Um, so what, what what current work do you have going on? Are you, are you are you making beats for for singers, rappers? Right now, I'm in a hole just in the lab. It's crazy. Like uh, I'm up and coming artist, as you know. 
Um, just trying to get out there. I, I have millions of beats for <laughs> rock stars, singers, new age, country, doesn't matter, like all in the book. Uh, as far as my projects go, uh, I'm currently working on like three different projects at once, which is 14K, Dutch, and uh, one I like to call Pariah, which is going to be a very special one. What's the significance behind the names? Uh, 14K is very huge significance behind that. Uh, the 14 stands for, well basically I was born June 14th. Uh, 1993, and it's just it's ironic that the number con consistently pops up. It's June 14th, um, Valentine's Day is the 14th, which is like covered like Cupid being born. Um, it's a whole bunch of shit. It's, 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 it goes deep. The first time I fell in love was uh, um, March 20th, 2009. Some way, somehow, when you add up and subtract some of the numbers together, it, it yeah, leads up to the number 14. 14. Right. And I put the K because where I'm from, when somebody puts K behind something, it's it's, it's like anti, basically. It's total opposite. It's like it's like my death, basically. My my birth and my death at the same time. My my love and hatred at the same time. The first day I was fell in love, it eats up to 14, 14K. I don't want to be in love. You know what I'm saying? It, love hurts at the end of the day. But it feels good at the same time. So I assume that first love didn't end? Not too well, no. <laughs> Not as I expected. Yeah, I'll be but, there. Uh, I don't have no regrets about it, you know? Everything happens for a reason. Because of all that stuff happened, it made me the person I am today, you know? Now, as far as Dutch goes, Dutch is just... Just the Smokers... It's just the Smokers hit album in general, like... It's just ten songs, just straight hits, something you can vibe to, roll up to. I'm saying something at the same time. It's not just about smoking and vibing. The beats are just dope. Everything is just dope about it. Now, Pariah is going to be like a special, special, special. I'll probably even try to make that, to get that to be an EP. But that's just the story. Pariah is basically a social outcast. Yeah. It's just an outcast in general. Um, somebody that's distant from everybody that doesn't really pay attention. And that's basically what the whole thing is going to be about. Kind of logical order. You, what, you see yourself as a pariah? I see myself as a pariah. In every kind of every aspect. Interesting. So, so what else? So what, what else? Can you tell us about yourself? You have a girl. Um, you, heard, you heard your love felt through one time. I have a girl. It's, it's a girl, you know. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, but yeah. my main as, uh, my main focus is my kid. You know? Oh yeah. I got a little girl. Yeah, she's turning one next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Congratulations. Yeah. How's that? How, how's fatherhood? Father is great, you know. It's, it's stressful a lot because, you know, you got one, I love it at the same time because I have something to live for. The downfall is the fact that you got, you know, you have to, you have to, you have to do for your kid. You have to know that you're going to do something. You got to know that you're stashing. You have responsibilities. You have, you know, priorities. All right, so I always say that most artists, their first albums is their life up until that point. Mm -hmm. 50 Cent's first album was about hustling and getting shot, that uh, up until that point. Then uh, you always see a drop, not always, but a lot of times you see a drop off in next albums, because they don't have anything to rap about. And I always say you need something major to happen in your life to rap about. So that being said, how does your, how does your raps differ pre-fatherhood, post-fatherhood? Do you see a difference? Very big difference. Um, but being a father, it really alters your mind, you know, like that whole nine months period, I didn't go out and celebrate, you know, hurry up and rush, like let's party and everything before I'm actually a father, you know, I actually took the time out to mentally prep myself, like for everything that's to come, which is why everything that does happen now, it, it, it comes a little bit more easy. So, the difference is, is yeah, my, my, my whole mind stayed different based off me prepping myself. So. I rap different. I, my whole mind thinking process is different. I'm more smarter. I'm more intuitive. You know. In that shows in your in your raps. In my in my in my beats, my raps, everything. The way, the, from the way I dress, from the way I speak. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Alright. So what do you do when you're not rapping? When I'm not rapping, I'm thinking of a rap. I'm making beats if I'm not rapping. I'm um I'm out there trying to. What is it? Craft my craft, I guess. Sharpen your sharpen your craft. There you go. It's always a good thing. I'm learning good something thing. new. I learn something new every day. You know, I'm always interested in learning something. All right. So you said you have, you know, a couple mixtapes. When can we expect those? Is there a date? Life 
is is I don't want to say it's stopping me or pushing me back because she can't shit stop me. But you know, there's obstacles and things. But there's a lot of uh, singles being created that that helps me further even more make it even greater projects. You know, so it's highly anticipated. I would say. So, but you can expect 2014. Everything's kicking off. No yeah. doubt about it. I I will make it my business. I I quit what I'm doing now to make it my business to do definitely get this kicked off. So where can we go now to hear hear your stuff? Right now you can go to soundcloud.com slash laysaun L A I S A U N uh youtube.com slash L A I S A U N soundclick.com slash L A I S A U N there is everything slash laysaun everything's in my name. Um that's where all my music is at, my beats Everything that you want to hear, you know, personal bio. Yeah. Any final words? Love over hate, more than anything. Love on. Yep. Cool. All right. Even when I was a day old, since the umbilical on my navel, I knew I was well and able to pave the way to my favorite red digits amongst the cable. Adjacent from the table where me and my sister Deja would argue over the Legos. Now I'm older with shoulders the size of boulders and fatal was tilted over the water with border patrol could lay low. Open to a promotion was the lowest on the payroll. Now I'm on top and niggas chop when I say so. That right there was just a chance of understanding the damage that I'm withstanding from standing amongst this planet. The cushions cushioning my land and ironically cause of right now honestly, I holler like I got shot out of cannon hugging my knees screaming around the moat, went from cursing the African out in dominoes, to a pan of steak on my stove with a pot of gold, a couple moments, some reefer for my dessert, keep the verse for what it's worth, lay.